Hello and welcome to a video on the Landlord Ledger Bookkeeping Program for rental properties. Now the first thing you're looking at here is our website and on the website at Pro Ledgers uh, you're going to see a product link to Landlord Ledgers and that takes you to this page and if you scroll down you're going to see uh, various products and basically you're looking at the uh, on the left side no tax versions so that means you're not charging any sales tax on the rents or on the right side you have the ability to track sales tax either one or two sales taxes so you choose on that basis left to right side and you can also choose between the basic and expanded versions as well and basic means one property that you're tracking one property and you can make one file per property I suppose but only one property per bookkeeping file or you can track multiple properties and actually an unlimited number of properties in a single file and underneath each there's a video button uh, how to use it there's a free trial button and you get a 30-day uh, chance to try it and anytime you can buy it and if you're on a free trial and you buy it you can just continue using your data and there's no problem scrolling down a little further you can see there's apps as well for both Android and iOS uh, to track and look at revenue statements and that's the website so let's go to the program now when you first open the program this is the screen you're gonna see there's a little bit of information on the left side about the, the uh, software and on the right there's a few video links to help you understand what these buttons do in the main screen and uh, really we have three choices here uh, set up a new file or open an existing file or we can go directly to a file that we've tagged as the current file which we're going to show you how to tag uh, a little later so we're starting out so let's go to the new file button and the example we're using here is the uh, program with, that's able to track sales taxes but it'll be the same except for this element here and in terms of the no tax version you just won't see this but anyway let's just go ahead and create a one tax file for the purposes of our demo now you can choose the file type and since we're going to track rental properties we want to use the landlord file type because this allows us to track security deposits and it sets up a chart of accounts that can work real well for a rental property scenario so let's choose landlords and there's our working screen and in this screen, you'll see a few uh, sections. Near the top is all our commands and filters, and we're going to go through those. On the right-hand side, there's extra video links and some help tips and so on. But we can turn those off for the, uh, for the demo. So I'm going to just click that off, and that cleans up the screen a little bit. And uh, we're ready to go. Now, uh, the first thing we need to do, uh, once you've created a new file, and you can see it gives it a default name, is you're going to have to save this file because if you just try to go and enter some records using this green enter record button it's going to tell you you must save before you can enter records so let's go to save give it a file name and put it in any folder that you want and let's call it a rental file and choose save and now we've got our file name and every file will end in dot ledger by default so you just need to enter in the first part uh, okay, so now you've done that. Now you're able to start entering records. Just follow the prompts and you can make your entries. So before we do that, um, let's also take a quick look at the setup screen and then we'll make a few entries. So in the setup screen, you can choose your financial year, the month the financial year starts, all the different accounts, uh, the rental property names or descriptors. You can edit all these, of course. You can set up your taxes if you have the tax version. Um, if the no tax version won't have these options but in this case we do have them you can set up income categories and sort them and if you want to set up a personal income uh, category you can do that and just make sure you uncheck it if it's a personal item so that doesn't show up in your business financial statement you can go down and edit all your expense categories and also you can edit the splits and the way these splits work is that, for example, if you're using your car 15% of the time for business and 85% for personal, you can set up these ratios here based on that kind of split. And we'll show you how those entries work. Okay, and bottom you can set up pre-written descriptions and edit them so you don't have to keep rewriting them over and over again on repetitive entries. Once you've got the setup screen the way you like it, you just save changes and when you want to set up a new bookkeeping file for next year 
you don't have to recreate all this. You can just export it into a file and then import it into the brand new file and everything will be there for you. So that's just a real handy thing. Oh, and you can also change your date format to a different format if you like. So choose Save Changes and we are good to go. Okay, so let's make an entry. So let's say we want to enter for a security deposit. So December the 1st, we just choose our date. You can choose whatever account's being impacted. You can say this is for property one. And down at the bottom, we can say security deposit. Put in a tenant uh, name if you like. And the amount is 500. There's no tax on that. And we can choose submit. There's also the option to add a receipt. If you have a paper receipt and you've scanned it, you can browse for it and attach it. Or you've taken a picture uh, with a phone or a camera as a JPEG, you can attach the image. Or you can scan the receipt using the camera on your computer. So and you can, once you've done that, you can close it and then we choose submit. And there's your entry. And uh, you can double click on that entry to re-edit it. You can delete it over here. And once you get your bank statements in the mail, you can reconcile it or you can tag it with no receipt or foreign currency, however you like. Okay, let's do another entry. Let's just record some income. So let's say we're going to record income into our checking account and it's property number one. It's rental income. And we can put in a tenant name again. Uh, then we can put in the total of the rent. And let's say there's no tax on that rent. Now, rent's going to happen every month. So if you want, you can actually set this up in one entry. With this repeat button on the right side of the date, you can say, okay, this rent I wanted for uh, November the 1st. Um, we're going to go with October the 1st. And you can continue clicking and choosing all the dates that you want to, sh uh, to appear on and click Done and Submit. And all the entries are done. And what we could have done and what we didn't show is that instead of choosing, if you're going to do these entries in advance, instead of going straight to check-in, you can just set them up as receivables. And they would all come up as receivables, for example, instead of in checking. And then each month, you just have to open the entry up and change to the account that you actually put the money into and then just choose Save Changes. So anyway, that's a real easy way to record all your rents uh, very quickly and easily in one entry okay so you've done a bunch of entries you can go to the report screen and you can see the uh, entries uh, in terms of numeric values on the left side you're going to see the total uh, plus business and personal combined on the right side you're going to see a business only statement showing the income and expenses and net income as well as security deposits are at the bottom here and you're also going to be able to see how many entries are unreconciled and uh, how much you spent with each account type and there's a reconciliation video in the faq page you can see in more detail how that works you can also look at it on a graph and you have a line or a column graph and you can and these are all fully dynamic so now you can take a look across here we've got all these filter buttons here so if you go to the month of december you're only going to see in the items for uh, december in terms of the report the graph and the records so these are all there to help you filter out records by account or by class or by category or a combination of the above. So if I go to all and then I'll see all the entries. So be careful when you're doing entries. Sometimes people make the mistake of having a filter turned on. So if you have December turned on, but you're making November entries, you won't see them show up because you got the filter on. So. Make sure you've got the filter set the way you like it when making entries. The other thing you can do is a magnifying glass. You can search by the description field. So this is a powerful feature. So if you have a tenant name, for example, and you use that in the description field, you can enter that here as a search term. And in this case, I'll just type the word tenant and you can see how it came up or the word name and it just shows a parcel search match even and filtered out those records for you and you can run a report on that or a graph on that and it's a real handy feature for landlords. If you don't want to use that search, uh, just remove it and hit the magnifying glass to turn off the bar. Now finally, what you want to make sure you do is press save uh, to make sure you don't lose your work and also to choose 
if you want to import data from online bank accounts or credit card statements, you can do that and you can do a whole batch of entries very quickly. And there's a video on how to use the import feature on the FAQ page. You can export the data as a spreadsheet file or a PDF document. And here's all the various options. And you can also print uh, the records or the reports or even notes on the file. And there's a little note button here on the right side. You can type in, you know, if you forgot, you want to, don't want to forget some details on tenant relationships, or you can make any notes you want and you'll just save it there. And there's a little button here to take you to the FAQ page of our website where you can get more videos than some of the other items. Now, the other thing to remember is that on the left side is the file name. You can close the file here and you can also use this star to tag it as the current file. So, you know, from year to year, you might just use one file uh, for each 12 months. So you don't want to have to go navigate to it each time. You can just tag it. And then when you open up the program, just choose current file from the opening screen. and It'll take you right to this file and open it for you. There's sync, which means you're reloading the file. But make sure you don't use this unless your data is first saved. And the reason we have that there is because there's free apps. And if you ran this program and didn't close it, in the meantime, made entries on a free app or even another computer. Uh, before you start working on that file, you want to make sure you sync it so it's got the latest data and then start working on it. But it's the same as reloading the file, basically. Okay, that's really all there is to it. Thanks for tuning in.